Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. It's time for some rigs for sea fishing. This time I'm going to show you how to get made up with a Pollock fishing rig, but you can also catch cod, coalfish, ling, wide variety, even bass using this rig. It's basically an anti-tangle rig. If you've been fishing a long time, don't worry, move along, there's nothing you'll learn here. If you are, however, a beginner or somebody in another country, it might be a technique you haven't seen before, could catch you that extra fish, and that's what we're all about here at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This is how I make it up. Okay, so this is a method for fishing deep water vertically from a boat, a drifting boat. The boat is drifting along like this. You are lowering your line to the seabed with a lead weight. Voila. Here's the seabed and you wind up a retrieve a lure through the water column. Depending on the species you're fishing for, let's say pollock, coalfish, it might be the third towards the bottom. Cod might be a little bit higher in the water. As you come up, you're going to hit different species. The majority of takes you're going to get, I would suggest, will be in the bottom quarter to a third of the water. Anyway, because you're dropping your lead here with your rig down through the water, from a drifting boat, the main line's coming down here, the lead is being towing, is basically putting all the rig down with it. It's liable on a long trace to spin up and tangle around your main line. So, to avoid doing this, I'll just place the binoculars on my face, you use what's called a boom. Now there's several types of booms available, I'll just show you three. One is a standard French boom, like this. Hopefully you can see that, hopefully the camera focuses. It's a wire one, very cheap, not so much for bigger fish, although it will hold up more for, say, inshore drifting for pollock. If you're going in water 20, 30, 40 feet deep, something like that, one of these booms will probably do you, especially if you're in your own boat or you're in dinghy or something like that fishing. Basically, that's a lightweight boom. You can then have plastic booms like this, much longer. These actually pop out, so you can snip them back to whatever length you want, really and the bottom end has a clip for a lead. Quite nifty, quite handy, you clip your lead on there. It's called basically flying collar rig, that's what it's called. And then obviously this boom, if you can imagine your main line comes down to here, out from here, and then your trace. So when you low it all through the water, probably at quite good speed, it won't twist up a tail. Now you can also make your own standard French boom I'll use this one for wreck fishing for pollock, bigger pollock, double filler, double thicker. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Just one minute there. No, it's definitely Merlot. A double figure pollock, that's better, is you have your lead at the bottom, main line up here and off the boom. There you'll trace with your lures, you can see it's exactly a straight copy of the wire one here, the lightweight wire, but much, much heavier, made from coat hanger wire, and better still, free. Okay, this is how you rig it up. Now, generally, for using a lure, it will be a replication of a sand hill, looking something like that. This one is, let's check this one out. This is called a Sidewinder Scary Zeal. It's six inches long, 25 grams, so you can cast it, but basically, with that tail like that, it's going to wiggle and thrash all the way up through the water column. That is a standard size for cod, pollock, coalfish, even ling. I'm going to be using, just for the purpose of this, some yellow line. Yes, it's a big sport because I used to do marlin fishing. I've got this one left over. This is 30, but I figure for your, your, your guys back there, you know, you, you people, you're going to be able to see this. I'm actually going to put on these things, which are called reading glasses. They actually do magnify quite substantially. A lot of you might fall around laughing when you get older and your eyes start to fail. You won't be laughing, you'll be so grateful to have the glasses. It is a pain. I've never gone to, I guess, contact lenses. Be frightened they're going to ping out everywhere. So, you tie your lure on. Generally a tucked blood knot. Now you can measure off on an average. I can only give you an average really. It would be eight to 10 feet. Now a span like this on most average guys, six feet, that's generally six feet. So I go six feet and the nose to the end of your arm, 
like that is generally three feet. That's nine feet. Some guys swear by having a huge long trace. I find not, but you do want it away from the rig. So, for argument's sake, I'm going to be using this coat hanger one here. On the end here, there's the triangle shape. For all you beginners, this is for beginners. On the end there, that's what God gave us teeth for. Spin it up, or just tie an ordinary knot, blood knot. You could do, do a tuck one. Saliva for slippage. That's tight. Snip off the surface. Surface? Hang on a minute. That's better. Snip off the surplus. Where would we be that? We wouldn't be able to be around with that wine, would we? There we go. There's the trace. There's the lure. Now then, all you do is imagine this is coming from your rod top straight out of your tip ring. It's your main line. There's a top and a bottom to the triangle. It doesn't matter which one you tie them first. Let's tie one on here first. Let's say the top. Two, three, four, five. You can tuck them, but I'm just using a standard one. Assuming everybody's looked at our knots videos in the playlist. Well, totally awesome playlist. I think there's two films up there with about 12 knots in there. Look, how many knots do you need? I use maybe three. Okay, so here is your real line coming down like this. There's the trace. Now on the end, we're going to be towing something down here using this lead. How are we going to join that to that? Well, your best bet is to use a lighter link of line in case it gets tangled. For the purpose of this, I'm just going to be using the yellow line because I want to make sure that you guys can see it. So you get yourself a piece of nylon. Let's say you're fishing with 30 pound trace, a uh, 30 pound main line. Your trace is probably 15 to 20 pounds. Then this, although it's yellow and it's obviously my 30 pound uh, marlin fishing stuff, should be 10 pounds. That way, if this snags in the seabed, it can break out. But I'll show you in a second, there's another way of doing this. We used to do this down Cornwall, where I used to go down fishing out of lure, quite a bit of lure, Polpera, Mevagissi, wreck fishing, reef fishing. My claim to fame is I once had, I think it was 220 and a 30 pound cod, in one day on this exact rig, over, I believe it was something like the Hands Deeps, with Alan Dingle, skipper of the Lady Betty. Right, now, this is the rig basically in its entirety. I'm going to put this on the floor, take two paces back. You've come from your rod top up here. You are joined to this top corner of the boom here. Your lead is there. You can see that there. See how it's holding it? Now look, you can see immediately this coat hanger wire is nice and stiff and it's holding it away. It's a boom. So when you drop it down quite quickly, you are this far away from your main line with your trace. It's going down like this, probably at a slight angle, right to the seabed, followed by your sand eel or wh whichever lure you want to use, really. Gets towed down to the bottom. Okay. Hits the bottom, put the reeling gear, a nice few fast work. Say, I reckon about six turns fast to get it off the bottom. You do not want to be drifting in a boat, dragging it, bumping along the bottom. You will eventually pull it into a snag. Uh, especially if you're a wreck or reef fishing. So basically it's hit the bottom. Now, what happens is the lead hits the bottom, you'll feel that, but lures like these, say these sidewinders, or indeed other makes as well, have an integral weight in there. You might be able to, I don't know, I can see it against the light there. You might not be able to see it, but there is an integral weight in there. So, as soon as the lead hits the bottom, bump, that's in the bottom as well. Not good news, is it really? So as soon as you feel that initial lead hit, be aware, this one's going to follow it down. And if you if you don't get it off the deck quickly, that first, say the height of the ceiling, eight feet up, you're probably going to lose your lure. In fact, sooner or later, wrecking or reefing, you will lose your lure. So you're going to drop down. Now, how do you get out of the trouble of this line here? If you haven't got any 20, you've only got, say, 30 pound line, which is the same as your real line. Just get your filleting knife. I just happen to have I got a pen knife in my pocket. I may well have. Just get a knife, I've shown this in Cornwall. Just scrape this lightly. You're just basically fracturing it there. Like this, shave a little bit of the, making a weak point in the lead there. 
Well, it works, doesn't it? You see the principle. It's weak, and then when you do snag in the bottom, that snaps away. You're fighting the fish here. It's going to come up, up through the water depths like this, and the fish is going to be down here on the end of the lure. So that's another way of doing it. You either fish with a light lead, uh, a light line, that was called a rotten link there, or you can just shape it with a pen knife or fill it in knife, just basically just scratch it. It's a very sharp pen knife, that one. Now, final tip is to avoid these integrally weighted lures sinking in the bottom. I'm going to snip this one off. You can use something like, say, a red gill, which is a leadless or weightless lure. And you can also put on one of these, which is one of those sidewinder weedless lures. Now you think, but I'm not fishing through weed. No, you're not fishing through weed, are you? But you don't know what's on that seabed. You have no conception of all the tangle of rocks, reefs, pinnacles. My dentist loves seeing me. Or anything. So if you fish one of these, okay, I'll show you in close up. Hopefully the camera can see it. There's the hook. It's got a special curve in it. It's a sidewinder, whatever it's called, weedless. That hook pushes up there. Can you see that? Which makes it look, there's just a bare hint of a point there. That will pull out of the weed easier than one with an open point. Can you see the difference? I can, you can see it on the camera, I know. There's the hook point. That will either go in a fish or a snag. This is the same, but if it goes in the snag, because you just basically just ease it like that. When the fish comes up behind it, this will pull through all the snags and hooks like that, look. But when the fish bites on it, it shuts. Brings the hook point clear. Bam. You've got the fish on. So there is the flying collar rig. You'd have a lead on there. Up to your main line. Drop it down. Slow retrieves up. About, I guess, of any depth you're in, something like a quarter to a third up. And what we used to do is count the revolutions of the reel. So you'd be winding, you go, hit the deck, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you go, seven, eight, nine, ten. You want a constant swimming motion, and that baffle tail, that paddle tail there, will be doing that, fluttering through the water. It draws the predators up, the coldfish, the cod, the pollock, be chasing it up. You'll feel a slow drag on the rod top. Don't strike. Just keep winding and winding and winding. We can't wind anymore. Check the reel drag is set so that it can give line. You should be hooked up. That's a tip there. Hope it catches you some fish. It's certainly caught me a lot of fish, and as I say, cod to over 30. So there's some good fish to be caught, pollock, ling, lots of fish. And of course, you guys in foreign countries can use that as well. You might have to incorporate some wire in there if you're fishing deep water for snappers, barracudas, kingfish, that type of thing. But the rig works, it's tangle free, relatively tangle free. Should catch you some fish. Don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show and look out for our magazine, The Awesome Angler, which is free to download. Check the websites. We'll see you again doing another fishing rig. We've got one on this rod here uh, that Dad's just left. We had a still we have, going. We have four hookups on four rods at the same time. I don't know how, quite how we're going to do this. this one's there's, just there's, taken. there's two fish up here. Yeah, just let them swim around. We'll try and get this one up. This feels like a better size, this one. Biggest one yet, I'd say. Oh, beauty, that's a netter. How did it take your time? He's got the other line as well. Hang on. Hang on. Can you net this as well, yeah. Mike? Let's leave the net there. I'll leave it by your feet. He's got the other line. We can't help that. There's just so many fish. Look at that pollock. Look at the size of that pollock. Don't worry about the tangle with the other one. Look at that. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Get in there, my woo! Ah, All fish. right, that is a pollock. Of the day. Look at the size of that one. That is a thunderous great big pollock. Come on. It's a big fish, it's another, it's another big pollock. About eight pounds. <laughs> About eight pounder. We'll get him in the net for you. Okay, we're on fish 23 now. Um, again, the sidewinder's absolutely slaying them. We've got a good seven pounder here, seven, eight pounder. Look at that. Nice old belly. belly. Look at the belly on that and one. I'm just going to net it just here. There we go, just about fits in the net. That's, that's eight, that's every that's bit of eight, one. I'd say. 
They are so hard on the feed. I don't think I've ever known ultralight spinning gear like this. And this is in a self-drive dinghy, don't forget. You know, we're not out on a charter boat. Beautiful. And he has, just to show you everybody. Gutted it. <laughs> he has digested that sidewinder. I don't know how far the camera goes down. Well, that's the lens inside. We've moved the boat again, trying to find the bigger fish, and we have found some bigger fish. We're catching these now, like eight pounders, two at a time, but we've only got one net. So we're gonna try and get two big fish in one net. That is like eight pounds. Yours is bigger. Hang on a second. Here we go. That one is about close to nine pounds. I'll let you lift those two out. You're younger than me. There we go. Age before beauty. What about that for a catch? Too big. I oh, seven, eight pounds, maybe nine, I don't know. Two real big pollock. Nicely hooked. And we got them in the one net. Man, there's a lot of fish out here. Is that Mark Gannon's fault? He sends us to all the best spots. Out in the charter boats, a lot of these fish will blow up with the air getting in their swim bladder. But because they're in shallow water on this light tackle, they don't blow up and you can return everyone. You don't you can kill them if you want to kill them because they're good eating fish, but we like to let them go. Away that one goes. Beautiful. 